Good evening, I'm Patricia Delo. I'm the mayor of Cape Town and a member of the Democratic Alliance. My job is to make sure the people of Cape Town get basic services that are provided for in our constitution. But tonight, I'm your host. This is a special edition of As It Happens, and this week, politicians are reversing roles with presenters on ENCA. And you get a chance to ask me questions on any topic of your choice. The number to call is 011-759-6340. You can send a video via WhatsApp on 082-884-6370. You can also tweet me at Patricia DeLille or ENCA. And please use the hashtag as it happens. But before we go any further, I like to reflect on Child Protection Week. The late Tata Madiba said that any nation that cannot look after its children is not worth to be called a nation. I want to focus on the sexual offences register that falls under the Department of Justice. Now, the South African Council of Educators is supposed to have access to this register, but they've been denied, and this is a problem, because that information allows educators and schools to vet their teachers in order to protect our young learners from possible sexual abuse. The Department of Justice must tell us why they have not allowed access to this register. Childline receives about 45,000 calls a month, and that shows you the extent of the problem we have in our country. I also want to make an appeal to all of us to report any abuse to Childline on 08000555. We need to remember the African saying, it takes a village to raise a child. We must all play a part in looking after not only our children, but those vulnerable within our communities. Right now, I'm going to take your video messages sent via WhatsApp on 082-884-6370. Ask me any question, I will answer, and let's go to the first one. Good evening, Anpet. This is Fred Isidal from the Western Cape. I would like to ask you two questions. One, what is the plan of the city to curb and prevent the taxi violence that is increasing in the Western Cape? Yesterday, nine people were gunned down due to taxi violence. What is the plan? Secondly, what is the plan of the city to curb down the illegal invasion of land? I'm referring to the land grabbers in the Western Cape. Thank you very much. My deepest condolences to all of the, uh, the families of the deceased that have died in the taxi violence over the past weekend. Violence cannot be justified for any grievance. And so together with uh, the South African police services, the provincial government, and with other political parties in, the, in those areas, They've all worked the whole of the weekend to try and find solutions. I want to thank the leaders of Codeta and Carta for rising above these differences and taking care of the problem. We hope that in the next few days we'll see a reduction in the number of killings, but we'll also make sure that we address any grievances by the drivers together with the owners of the taxi associations. As far as illegal invasions are concerned in our city, in, more, in a, one month we had more than 60, 65 land invasions. We are all working very hard to engage with our communities because illegal land invasions cannot be allowed. As the city, we work from a database 
and people must wait their turn. But they must also engage with the city. We have been able with many communities, and I'm currently consulting with more than 20 different communities in our city, and just by talking to one another, we can find solutions. But please do not invade land. Hi, my name is Jean-Claude Mbuyamba. I'm sending this video from the US to Mayor Patricia Delisle. Mayor, because you've been treated so poorly by the DA, would you consider uh, leaving the DA and then joining an, a different political party like uh, the Economic Freedom Fighter or maybe the ANC? First of all, my fight today with the Democratic Alliance is about my rights, it's about human rights. It's also to prove and to illustrate to South Africa and indeed the country that we are all equal before the law, that we are all subject to the constitution of this country. And my fight is about showing all public representatives in this country that I'm doing it on their behalf. I cannot at this stage plan my future with a dark cloud hanging over me. I need to clear my name. My name of being smeared in public, it must be cleared in public. And until we reach that point where I've cleared my name, and South Africans can again respect my reputation that I've built up over many years, more than 45 years in politics, then I will take South Africans in my confidence and I will tell them what to do with my future. I still have got a lot of energy left. I can serve my country in any capacity. I love my country. I want to see that more people in our country taste the fruits of our new democracy that we all fought for and struggled for for many years. So that really is my vision for our country and I'm committed to make sure that I serve my country in any capacity. Good evening, uh, Grandma Dilil. Do you think that it is still wise for you to stay in the DA? Uh, I mean, we all know that uh, relationships have been polarized. And uh, with the news and the reports that uh, there could be a splinter party, do you, do you believe that it's still fair for your political career to remain in the DA? Thank you. First of all, for me, it's important that I clear my name and that I, I stay in the DA and that all of these untested allegations against me must be tested because that's my right to have them tested. And all of I've asked for over the months is to say, please charge me. I have been charged. I'm already subject myself to a disciplinary process. And from then onwards, we can clear my name and we can, uh, the, the people of South Africa can then decide whether I'm guilty or not. Up till this day, I've not been found guilty of anything. And therefore, I will continue to fight for a due process. The DA is a party of systems and due process. And I am also entitled to be subjected to that due process. Oh, thank you for your video questions. Uh, still ahead on the special edition as it happens. I'm speaking to an educator, an author, Prof. Jonathan Jansen, and please stay tuned uh, uh, for the conversation. <laughs>